Google Tag Manager gets messy really quickly, especially if you keep adding more tags over time. This means that tags are hard to find and that the chance that you make a mistake actually increases. Also, it makes the whole experience inside of Google Tag Manager way more overwhelming. Well, my solution to this problem is to apply a rigid naming convention. And this technique alone can make your experience inside of Google Tag Manager way less overwhelming and way more enjoyable. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my naming convention. So let's dive in. Welcome to the channel, my name is Leon. I'm here to help you use your web stats to grow your website without spending hours in the process. I wanna say thank you to everyone that has been liking my videos and has subscribed to the channel recently. That really helps me get these videos out to as many people as I can. And as a way to say thank you, I've created a short cheat sheet on how to grow the traffic to your website. So whether you have a new domain or an existing domain, if you want to grow the traffic to your site, this cheat sheet is for you. I've collected over 20 different tips over the past 15 years in my work as a consultant and put that inside of that cheat sheet. So if you want to download it, it's for free via link in the video description. Also, if you want to watch more videos just like this, just head over to my profile. Over the past year, I've created lots of videos on how to set up Google Analytics and how to use Google Analytics in order to grow your website. All right, let's talk about naming conventions inside of Google Tag Manager. Why would you even do this? Well, in my work as a web analytics consultant, I log into other people's container all the time. And the feeling that I get generally when logging into someone else's container is a sense of overwhelm. And it is something that I get back from people all the time that Google Tag Manager makes them feel overwhelmed. And I don't think the reason that Google Tag Manager makes us feel overwhelmed is the program itself, I think it's the way we use it. Because if you do not apply a certain structure to your tags and to your triggers, it makes it very hard to see what's going on. And if you're looking for something, for instance, you're looking for that button click event and you wanna do something with it, and you need to look through the list and you're looking for a couple of minutes to find it, it makes the whole process of working with Google Tag Manager really annoying because you could do some things in split seconds, but because you're looking all the time, it makes the whole process of working with Google Tag Manager just not so fun anymore. And also, it makes it really hard not to make mistakes or not to double count certain things. Sometimes triggers are added like two, three, four times for the same reason where you could just remove all the doubles and just have one trigger. And that's what's happening if you do not apply a rigid structure. I like to work fast. I want to find my tags, my triggers, as soon as I can. I want to make as little mistakes as I can. I want to make the process fun and I do not want to feel overwhelmed all the time. So this is why I apply a rigid naming convention to my Google Tag Manager account. And I kind of recommend that you do as well because it makes such a difference. So in the next couple of sections, I'm gonna talk you through my naming conventions for tags, for triggers, for variables. And I apply the 80-20 rule to this. So there will still be certain situations where you do not know, okay, how do I name this? And then I just pick a name and I can always change it later. But around 80% of the time, I'm quite sure how I wanna name this. And this makes the process of finding things real easy. Also, I just wanna point out here that my naming convention is just a naming convention. So I would love to hear if you have a different approach because I wanna learn from you also. But this is my naming convention and it has really helped me over time and it's evolving. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a tip on how you can bulk rename your container. So you do not have to open up every tag and every trigger once at a time. You can just use the tool that I recommend at the end of the video. All right, let's dive into my default setup. So we're inside of Google Tag Manager uh, to take a look at my naming convention. This is my default setup. So if I start a new implementation, this is what I import and start to work from. And the first thing that I wanna point out is that I never use folders. So if I go into folders, you'll see that everything that I have here is in unfiled items. I could add a folder to just demonstrate why I don't use it. So let's add a folder, Google Analytics. If I add, for instance, my config tag and some event tags into that folder. So now I have a folder that contains four tags. If I go back into tags, you'll see that there has been a column added to this list with the name folder. And I find that folders just really clutter up 
the screen without adding clear benefits to the whole process. Because to me, a folder is just something on my desktop where I put my files in, but here it is just a little bit of a weird tagging system. I personally do not see why adding folders adds a better structure to your account. It does clutter up my screen, so that's why I choose to remove it. So what I like to do on setups that have some basic folder st structure set up, usually it is not maintained well, but that's uh, beside the point. I just like to add all the tags out of the folder into unfiled items. And if you have a folder that's empty, you can safely remove it by hitting delete here. And if I go into my text list now, you'll see that the column is gone and the whole screen is just a little bit more clear and less cluttered. So now let's take a look at my naming convention for text. You'll immediately see that I start my text with a number. So here it is 00.01. I use numbers because this list is sorted alphabetically. And by using numbers, I can make a decision on what exact order I want the text to be in. So I can put the most important text at the top and the text that you do not need every week, the text that are just there for utility reasons, for instance, your JavaScript code or your cookie banner scripts, or maybe some text for content mode, I can put them down at the bottom. I can just really make a decision on what order I want the text to be in. The second thing that I want to point out here is that I use different groups. So inside of this number, I start with 00.01. So I make groups. So for instance, 00 is a group. And then within that group, I give every tag a number. So 00, 01, 00, 02. So this is a group. And then you have a group 01.01. So every tag that starts with 01, I see as a group. And then 02 is a different group. And then at the end, I have some text 99. So let's explain what the groups are inside of my setup. At the top of my tag list, I like to have all the configuration tags. So right now I have Google Analytics 4 and I have Meta Ads. And let's say I want to add Hotjar as well. So I'm going to go in, say 00.03, because it's the third tag in the group. I say Hotjar. I'm going to look for Hotjar. I'm going to fill in the site ID. And I'm going to say I want this on every page. I'm going to use the initialization all pages tag here. I'm going to hit save. Right now, the first group contains all the programs that are installed on this site. Everyone that logs into this container immediately sees three programs, Google Analytics 4, Meta Ads and Hotjar. So let's look at the second group. I start the second group with 01 and this 01 is kind of a reference to the first tag in the first group. So I start the first group with 00 and then dot 01. And this is GA4. And this 01 is kind of a reference to the first group below that. So every tag that starts with 01 is linked somehow to Google Analytics 4. So in Google Analytics 4, of course, you have a lot of event tags. So every event tag for Google Analytics 4, I prefix that with 01 and then 01 GA4 event and then all the e-commerce events, 01.02 and then all the account events, so I have login and sign up for that, and then form submit. So I have every GA4 event tag, I prefix that with 01. And the same goes for meta ads, so meta ads is 0002. So the group that is prefixed with 02 are all the events, meta ads events that I'm sending into meta ads. So 0201 are the e commerce events, and then you could have a contact or complete registration or search or lead. There are different events that Meta Ads also supports. So I put that in their own group. And then at the bottom of the page, I like to start it with 99 because I know for sure that I won't have more than 100 groups inside of my container. That has never happened before at least. So I start a group 99 with all the code snippets. So I have a couple of default code snippets that I just import and then sometimes remove or sometimes will use. I like to start all these code snippets with 99 and then 9901, 9902, 9903. If I add more, I will do 9904, etc. Also, if I have a cookie banner, it's not in my default setup because it just differs so wildly what people will use on their site. So I like to start cookie banners with the number 98. It will end up at the bottom of the list, just above the code snippets. So this is the way I like to structure my tags. As I said, I apply the 80-20 rule here. About 80% of the time, I will know for sure where I need to put a tag in the list and 20% of the time I'm just making stuff up as I go. I can always change later, but this really helps me give a general feel of structure inside of my Google Tag Manager container. So I've already told you about my naming convention for tags, but I have also some loose rules that I like to apply to triggers and variables as well. So let's take a look at my triggers. So one thing I like to do here, for instance, is I like to prefix all my click triggers with the word click. 
So it doesn't really matter if it's a click on a link or a click on all elements. I like to prefix that with the word click. So for instance, click on all links, click on buttons, click on downloads, email, frequently asked questions. I come across that real often. So I keep that in my default setup. Click on footer, click on header, click on phone. So every trigger that responds to a click on a page, I like to prefix that with the word click. The reason for this is that this really encourages the reuse of existing triggers. So it happens really often that I log into a client's container and then I find, for instance, four different triggers that basically do the same thing. So they could have used one trigger, but they're using four triggers because the triggers were just added by different people or people forgot that they made the trigger in the first place. So by applying this small naming convention, you encourage the reuse of existing triggers. So you're not using four triggers where you basically could have used just one instead. So something else I like to do here is I like to put all the page view triggers in the same group, so to speak. So I prefix every trigger with the word page. And I do the same thing with data layer events. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it because it's a little bit more advanced. But for instance here, I have a trigger that responds to all the e-commerce data layer events. So it's called event and then e-commerce events GA4. Okay, variables. Here I apply the least amount of structure, but I do have some things that I like to do. Everything that I pull from the data layer, I like to prefix that with the name data layer. With an exception of the information that I pull from the data layer that's related to e-commerce. So if a client is using the default GA4 data layer setup, I like to prefix all these variables with the word e-commerce. Let's see lookup tables. I always prefix that with the name lookup. And then if a data layer is explicitly related to a certain platform, I like to start that variable with the platform name. For instance, GA4 link click parameters. So these are some default parameters that I like to use in my Google tag, the measurement ID from GA4, and then also some uh, like a meta pixel like ID that I want to fill in for a client. If the variable is specifically related to a platform, I like to prefix that variable with that platform name. All right, so that is my naming convention for Google Tag Manager. Uh, but how do you apply a new naming convention to an existing account without needing to open up, change the name, and save every tag, trigger, and variable on its own? Well, there's a handy tool that's called gtmtools.com. You can use this for free. It's created by Simo Ahava, a really well-known figure in our world. I'm so thankful for him that he put this together because it saved me a ton of time over the years. And if you log into this tool, you can do that with your Google account. It will automatically pull all the containers that you have access to from Google Tag Manager. And then you can head over into workspace mode. This is the mode that I like to use to quickly rename the entire container. So you can just open up tags and then you can rename all the tags here one by one. And you can rename the triggers as well. And then you can rename the variables as well. And if you're done, you just click update workspace and then you head over to Google Tag Manager and refresh your container and see all the changes that you've made. And then you only need to submit it and then your workspace has changed. All right, that's it for today. I hope this video was clear. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Also, if you want to watch more, just head over to my profile and you'll find all sorts of videos on Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, how to set up and how to use it to grow your website. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.